Hey there, Father Michael here. Well, it's Monday morning, and I guess it's time for a confession. So you're going to hear mine. A few weeks ago, <clears throat> I had a deposition to do in the presence of my attorney and the opposing attorney representing my ex, a pompous little guy, clearly infatuated with himself, <laughs> uh, was determined to trip me up and to catch me in some kind of a false statement under oath. But the more consistently I simply repeated the simple facts of the matter, the more frustrated and the more desperate he became. Part of his frustration was due to the fact that he did not do due diligence for his client, my ex. He used basically a legal Zoom document, generic, but it left a little clause in there by mistake that is giving me a way to challenge the settlement. And so I gave him as big a smile as I could and I thanked him for making that error because without it, I wouldn't have any legal standing. <clears throat> I wouldn't have any way to, to address the inequity of you know, not even getting my own property returned to me, as well as a lot of money from the sale of the house and property. So to be sure, with COVID and everything, I have had a lot of time to get all my ducks in a row. I have spoken to people uh, who knew my ex long before I did, all of whom are willing to testify under oath. Uh, to his underlying greed and preoccupation with money. I have spoken to his former employer, who is literally standing by, waiting to take him to court and to make him repay money he should not rightfully have earned. But it all comes down to my ultimate piece of information. It all comes down to whether or not I drop the bomb that I have been withholding to this point. And if I use it, yes, I will most assuredly win the case. But but it will be at the cost of destroying someone's life, their livelihood, and probably put this person's retirement security in jeopardy. That's the horns of the dilemma that I'm on today. I have spent a lot of time because of the COVID lockdown and the court hearing being pushed, pushed further and further back, I've spent a lot of time gathering my unimpeachable list of witnesses and evidence as a way of trying to rectify a grotesque injustice. And it has been difficult accepting the fact that someone with whom I once shared my soul worked so hard to destroy me and my life, turning his back on the son we raised together, whom he claimed he loved, and ultimately the money stolen from me would ultimately go to him 
as his rightful inheritance. In other words, if I'm looking for justifications for dropping this bomb, the justifications are there. But this is where my righteous anger and legitimate outrage could slip over that line and go far beyond simple justice and instead cause more destruction than is justifiable. I am not alone, I think, in struggling with this. I've been betrayed and lied to and manipulated and robbed by someone for whom I would have died. I would have taken a bullet. You know what that feels like too, a lot of you. And in the process of someone else's manipulation and dishonesty and lack of integrity, I almost lost everything. <clears throat> My career as a teacher was in jeopardy. The Fort Wayne police were knocking on the door with all kinds of fantastic fairy tales that they had somehow invented. My reputation could very well have been ruined, but instead, by God's grace, here I stand, stronger than ever. I'm haunted by Paul's words in the letter to the Romans. They keep kind of bouncing around in my head and heart. Chapter 12, bless the ones who curse you. Try to live at peace with everyone. Don't pay someone back evil for evil. Be careful to do the right thing. Don't be swept up in revenge, but instead let God take care of that. In other words, don't be swept away by the floodwaters of evil. Instead, overcome evil with good. Wow. That's a hard teaching. Because when we are hurt, especially by people we once trusted, it is so hard to forgive. But Paul says, repay the evil with good. Humble yourself before God. Don't take matters into your own hands. So, that is where I'm at today. And by telling you this story, I'm making myself accountable in a public kind of way. I'm going to pray for the grace to forgive and to let go and not use the weapon I have that will leave nothing behind but scorched earth. I'm hoping you're going to say a little prayer for me that I do the right thing, whatever the right thing is. I think I already know. I think just talking it through with you, I think I know what the right thing to do is. But that is hard. Don't pay evil back with more evil. Be careful to do the right thing. Don't take revenge. Let God handle it. Don't be swept away by the evil to the point that you engage in evil yourselves. Rather, overcome evil with doing the next good thing. 
pray with me, please. Loving God, we come into your presence in this moment, grateful for all the times you have listened to the cries of our broken hearts when you have heard our cries of outrage and anger at having been used and manipulated and treated badly. Help us to remember that everything we go through in this life was also experienced by Jesus the Christ, the only begotten. Like him, help us to find a way to do the next right thing. Help us to listen like he did to your will, which is at all times manifesting itself within us. And when we are tempted to slip into revenge mode. Give us the grace to hit the pause button and just think and pray things through. For all the times you have encouraged us, given us grace, and helped us to remain standing even though the floodwaters have swept and swirled all around us. We are grateful. Help us to trust a little bit more in you today.